Hello, hello. This hello. is Adaye Moon, and I'm the Associate Artistic Director here at the Ajqua Outfit. And I have the pleasure of uh, talking to two wonderful artists that I work with on a on a daily basis, uh, but also artists who are participating in our fantastic production of Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And those two people would be Matt Torney, the director, and the wonderful Tess Malice Kincaid, who's playing Martha. <laughs> hey, y'all. Um, so Matt, I'm gonna start with you, actually. Uh, so, Last year, you did The Human, which was which is probably considered a contemporary classic. And now, this year, you're doing Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which is undoubtedly <laughs> canonical American classic piece of drama. Um, what is it about pieces like this that, that, that draw you in, man, and make you want to tackle these big monster plays? Um, oh boy. Um, so there's something about the, just the, the sheer challenge of these like big, brilliant plays that just really calls to me as, as an artist. And, and also like both plays have a couple of things in common that I, that I really look for in projects. Um, it's really hard to pin down what makes them work. There's like this human element, this human connection between character, story, writer, moment that just that just grabs hold. And then the second is that they require incredible ensemble acting, which is something that, that I just love to, to, to work with actors on. I love to build those ensembles, and go, on these, go on these journeys together. Um, I will say that uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is probably the hardest thing that I've ever done. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, the, the humans is pretty tricky, but this is just, it's bigger, it's meatier, it's stylistically more, it, like, more diverse, it's intense, it's, 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 it's a real, it's a real, it's, there's a reason it's, it's done so much, it's a masterpiece, and that's what makes it so, so challenging and, 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 and difficult. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what gets me really excited. It's less about trying to create a production for a specific outcome and more like you're inviting the artists and the audience to come with you on like a, like a big, deep, rich journey. Yeah, definitely. So Tess, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. You are an Albie actor. <laughs> <laughs> you have done multiple plays by Mr. Albie. What is it about his work? that that excites you i love the language i love the characters they're outrageous and real and it, it you can just dig into them with every fiber of your being um but yeah the literature the literary references is just such smart writing and to be able to act it and say those words is such a gift um, yeah, this is the second one I've done, and I, uh, yeah, I'm an Albi fan. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so, and, and this question is, is for both of you. So, uh, the play, what's our running time now? Is it is it uh, three? Are we running? I think three? it's three, three, three plus intermissions. Three so, plus yeah, intermissions. So that's a heavy lift, uh, creatively and also for an audience. But the thing that's exciting to me is that I think this is a lift that we all need right now in American theater. Like we need to get back to doing some heavy, big plays. So I would love, I would love for both of you to talk about um, why you think, you know, these sort of big plays are are important for us to be producing right now. Uh, well, I'll start by saying I had some friends come and see the show, I guess, the first Sunday. And they stuck around afterwards. They were theater people. And I was so touched by what they said afterwards. They, I said, did it feel long to you? They said, no. But they said, Tess, we came here for a theater event. Mm. We were jazzed about coming to an event. And that's what we got. And we were totally fulfilled by it. And that, that's, I think, what this piece gives. It's a theatrical event. You you just dive into it. The actors do too. Steve and I stand backstage. 
before we walk on stage every night. And, you know, we hate those moments before, before you go on stage, you're just dying to get out there and start, but it, because it gives you time to go, Oh, do I remember this part and what happens here? And you don't, you just jump on the train and you go and it's an incredible ride and a wonderful journey through some great theater. And you're right. We don't see a lot of this anymore. A lot of plays not to take away from them, but there's a lot of hour and a half plays now. No intermission, straight through. You go in, you know, you get this. This is you're in for this theatrical adventure. And that I think is exciting. It's what theater used to do all the time, you know. So I'm thrilled to be a part of something like that. Um, I remember at the Dublin Theatre Festival in, um, I think, 2004, I saw uh, Gats by Elevator Repair Service, in which a group of actors performed the entire novel of The Great Gatsby. I think it's like eight hours long. There's three intermissions. Um, and it remains one of the best things that I've ever seen. Not because it was long, but because it was exactly as long as it as it needed to be, which was the length of the full story. And the weird premise of it, like the set was kind of weird. And it was very much about the artistic creativity of the actors involved rather than the, the, the specific telling of the story, but they were they were interwoven and, and, and connected. But there was something about the length of that show and the just being in that world and falling into the rhythm of it that would, could only be theater. You know, there's, you were there live, it was happening live, you were there. And, and I remember at the time, um, I was also uh, participating in a 10 minute play festival. And I remember turning to a friend of mine and saying, you know, some of these 10 minute plays feel longer than Gats. Right. <laughs> Which is, which is eight hours long. I, I had to stop and have a meal in the middle of it, you know? And, and, I, and I think that, that that's something about things being as long as they need to be, mm. rather than as long as, rather than fitting like a commercial slot or a commercial need. Because I love a 90 minute play. Because, you know, if you don't love it, it's going to end soon. But plays like this one, that, that there's three acts, there's three, which, which I see like three short plays. Um, each of which has its own like intent and its own stylistic difference and its own like unique tone. Um, that it's like watching the you know the joke would be making around the office is it's like watching three episodes of a HBO special. Right. You, you watch episode one, you get a cliffhanger. You go and get a drink. You watch episode two, so ooh, you know that was a bit different than episode three. Kind of like grabs hold of it and, and, and tries it home. So yeah, I'm not sure that I'm calling for a resurgence of three and four hour theatrical experiences every time you, you go to the theater. But I do think that not being, not being afraid of asking an audience to participate in something great mm -hmm. that involves a commitment of time uh, is really important, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, two more questions, I just thought something else. Um, and, and I want, I'm gonna rephrase these a little differently for both of you. Uh, Tess, you know, you're, you're still running, the show's still going on. We're two weeks in now. Um, what are you learning about your craft as an actor exploring this role, Martha? It, it is probably the most difficult, most challenging role that I've ever played. Um, and I've done some big roles, but just the, you know, you get a lot of questions from audiences, understandably, how do you learn all those lines? And sometimes we're like, poo poo. Ah, uh, you know, it's just kind of, it's what we do. With this show, I get why they asked me that. Because it's a lot of words. And that alone technically was difficult. But then it, the journey, I know I keep using that word, but the journey of this character, of all of the characters, it truly is an adventure mm -hmm. every night to get to go on this human journey with this character that goes all over the place. So it really takes every bit of my acting chops to stay on top of that, to bounce on top of that, to be present in the moment of it and to be facile and agile with what's being thrown at me. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it's technically challenging, but it's also such a joy 
to go on that emotional journey and and to find this character that has so many different vulnerabilities, uh, uh, flaws. Um, it, it's and to be on it with this incredible cast and to be led by Matt. It was it's been a delight, but it's been it, yeah, it has kind of tested every every piece of my my training along the way, my experience along the way. But I'm honored to be able to do it. Awesome. And, and Matt, sort of rephrase it here for you as well. I mean, what have you learned about your process and your craft as a director from working with these amazing actors during the rehearsal process? Um, well, the, the the most important thing is that you've got to you've got to really create a space where people can use their intuition. You've got to really welcome instinctive discoveries because all of the best things that we that we found in the rehearsal room came from something happening or someone making a choice or something new emerging and then not being afraid to to, to follow that. Um, and that's always true, but on a play that's this big and this complex, that is really, really, really true because it's been done a lot. Pe many people will have seen it before, they'll have seen the movie. And I can't imagine anything more boring than an academic production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. That's like an essay, a, a commentary on who these characters, you've, you've really got to find something that is alive. And to do that, you know, you've, you've really got to invite people to, to a meeting place between the craft and impulse. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I found like to, to do that on a play this complex, to, to achieve the right balance between what's set and what's free um, was was really the root of the challenge, but also it was very illuminating because I was like, oh, it would work just as well in other plays. You know, they don't skip to the end. Create create room for artistry, and and we also had a rule in the rehearsal room: like, let's not talk it to death. If it works, it works. Right. Don't question it. Just own it, so that we don't talk it away or bring something from the guts up 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 into the head. So those are all like lessons and instincts that I'm hopefully going to bring forward into my work in the future. Awesome. And I think one of this final question would be from both of you as well. What, what would you like the audience to sort of walk away with after they experience this event that y'all created? Well, I, I, Matt, I'll let you dive into that more than me, but I, I did want to, I, I, can I PS on something that Matt just said about yeah, not no, talking yeah, things to death? Because I'm I'm a person, and Matt knew this, me coming in. I love sitting around the table talking things, talking about things, talking, talking, talking before we, we didn't with this play. And I learned a lot about, not that I don't want to do that with certain shows, but with this play, it made perfect sense because there's this theme that the audience that has not yet seen this show will see about truth and illusion. Mm. There's a lot of people have their own truths especially in this play yeah. and not wanting to expose that and, and name what was true and what was illusion for each other was really important. And I think, I, I think shed a lot of light on how we played our characters too. So I'm, I'm grateful for that experience. And I was, I was hesitant at first when Matt said, we're not going to spend a lot of time around the day. Well, I went, what? No, that's I what I like to do, Matt. But we didn't, and it was it was great, and it, and I think it really served the piece. As for what people will walk away with, I you know they're going to take what they will. I I hope they will walk away with a love of really some really great theater, mm -hmm. and a really great story, and hopefully uh, compassion for all of these characters. Understanding about all of these characters. Somebody said to me the other day too that she was moved to feel for Martha in ways that she had never felt before. And I'm honored that she said that about this production, yeah. but you know, that I, I hope people get that and that they see who these individuals are because there's Martha's and honey's and Nick's and George's all around us that are, are dealing with their own demons. And I just think it can provide a really wonderful insight into humanity for them told in a really beautiful poetic uh, uh, sometimes absurd, um, exciting, funny, savage way. Yeah. I mean, but I have a much shorter answer is I, I want audiences to leave uh, both like, first of all, surprised 
I want them to come in expecting something from, you know, an American classic and just be totally surprised at how, like, insane the play is, all the insane things that happens, <laughs> the twists and turns that are just so completely, like, shocking and unexpected. And I just think that that feeling of being, like, shaken up is, is, is the first thing I want people to leave with. And the, the second is just to, to, to ponder the mystery of humanity. Mm -hmm. how complex and brilliant and desperate and noble and you know everything we all are and have the capacity to be uh we, li we live in a world which is full of certainty people are certain about absolutely everything <laughs> and the thing about this play is nothing nothing is certain it's it's a struggle to become it's a struggle to articulate it's a struggle to win a game you can't even fully describe and and that feels a little bit more like like living or, or maybe it's just me maybe just my life feels like that but but that yeah that the quixotic and beautiful nature of human living yeah i, I mean i i yeah the idea that or the theme that nothing is certain ever <laughs> is to me one of the most powerful things about this piece and i want to thank you both for creating some beautiful work and really encourage the people listening and watching to come out and see, I think, one of the best ensemble performance I've seen of, of any group of actors on stage in Atlanta in a very long time. Uh, it is worth the three hours, y'all. Please come out. <laughs> <laughs> it is totally worth it. Please come out and, and see Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf at the Atwell Outfit. Thank you all for your lovely work. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.